Hi everybody, it's Joe Krug from FinSuite. This video is a high level overview, an introduction to Client First. Client First is our new official CSS naming convention and web flow style system. We are going to be using Client First for all of our client projects. It's for people who have been 10 years developing websites. It's for people who have been developing websites for five days. Let's get into this and I'm going to read this paragraph here to give you a really good understanding of why we're doing this and what this is. Client First is a set of guidelines and strategies to help you build Webflow websites in a clear and scalable way that any human can understand. Clients, marketers, Webflow developers, and anyone who opens your Webflow project should be able to read a class name and understand what that class name is responsible for doing. So it's all about being clear. It's all about naming things so they have a meaningful name so somebody can go in, make edits, and understand what's going on. We have two different types of global classes. We have our recommended global classes, and then we have our other global classes. We'll be going over the difference and We'll start up top with recommended. We're going into these in much more detail in the classes page. This is much more of a high level overview, giving you an idea of what clients first is and how we're approaching it. Recommended. We have three recommended global class systems. We have our core structure, typography, and spacing. Core structure is the outer page elements that hold all of the components together. Our page wrapper, our main wrapper, page padding, our section wrappers, and our containers. All of these are the same throughout all of our builds. So if someone else knows client first, they can go into your build and they know all about these outer page structures. And if you don't know about client first, look how nice and simple these are named. You really do have a good understanding of what these probably do. We're going to go into a lot more detail of these in the classes page. Typography. Typography is so important to keep global. We don't want hundreds of textiles that's very, very difficult to manage. So we want every single piece of text to be global. And we can do that through heading classes, text classes, and we have a whole system for how to keep your typography organized. And then we have spacing. Spacing is important to make sure that we don't create hundreds and hundreds of custom classes to do the same spacing. We also want to make sure that we have global spacing throughout our build. We don't want all these different variations of vertical spacing. So we have a spacing system to help you keep organized. These are the big three. These are our recommended global classes. These come with the client first clonable and we're using all of these in every build. Then we have our other global classes. These classes are important to be global and they may not be required for every build. They may not be required for what you're doing, but we use them in most of our builds. They help us build faster. They help us build stronger. And some of them are really important to be global. Here we have the responsive visibility. We want to show things or hide things on mobile and desktop. We have a class system good to go and do that. This is also really useful as you're building to quickly show and hide things. We have max width, making sure that things only go a certain width on the page. We have a whole system to make sure that is unified. Icons. We don't need a hundred different icon sizes. They should probably be fitting into our size system. So we have some classes to go and do that. Background colors, really easy to go and add these background colors, manage them globally. And then we have just some useful classes, utility classes to go and build quicker. Of course, everything cannot fit into a global class system. If you're building a Webflow site and you try to fit everything into a global class system, that makes your build difficult to manage. You need to do custom classes. So we have a whole setup for custom classes and none of the custom classes are included with the clonable. 
Custom classes are all about what you're doing in your project. We have classes for components. So let's say you have a home header component and you need to style it. We have a system to name your custom classes so we know they have to do with the home header. Home header component, home header content, home header title wrapper, and so on. This way, we know this custom class was created specifically for the home header. And then we have classes outside of components. We need custom classes that may not fit into a specific component. It's just a class to do something random, like an item border shadow, header accent image, animation scroll into view, layout option A. Look at the difference here. We have an underscore and we have no underscore. So when we get further into client first, when we go over the classes, when you read through the mindset, you're going to understand how we have guidelines to name your custom classes so it all fits together and anybody who opens your build will understand what's going on. So that's the overview. That is what you need to know to continue going through this build. Please go into the classes page. We'll be going over each one of these in a lot more detail.